So when I was 15, I was at a bowling alley with some friends. We, and there was an arcade in this bowling alley, and in there, there was one of those punching machines that, that you hit and it tells you, you know, how big you, you know, how, how high you hit. And me, you know, being a guy with a bunch of pride, I wanted to go up to it, you know, see how hard I could hit it. And of course, I went up to it, and when I hit it, I hit a pretty high score, you know, I felt pretty good. Right after I got done, some other kid with another group of friends, who was probably about half my size and 150 pounds lighter than me, <laughs> I went up to it in front of all of my friends and hit almost 100 pounds higher than I did. Almost maxed the machine out. I was completely embarrassed in front of all my peers. My pride was just thrown to the floor by some kid that was like above 45. <laughs> so I went up to the kid afterwards and I asked him, I said, man, I said, how did you get that so hard? Like, what do you bench press? Like, really, are you want something? Like, what's up? <laughs> and he's like, man, it's not about how hard you can hit. It's about how you hit it and your technique and how you follow through with the hit. Yeah. So this is like when the enemy attacks us. It's not that we, ha we don't have the potential and we don't have the ability. It's the lack of knowledge and the lack of knowledge of God's word. Yeah. But many of us lose to Satan when he attacks, but it's, it is not because of the inability Christ has given to us because Jesus has already defeated him. Yeah. Many of us go to church, we worship God. You know, sometimes we, even, we may even raise our hands when it gets a little bit crazy. But when Satan attacks, it's hard for many of us and we give up. And why many of us fail is not because of our love for God, but it's because the lack of knowledge of God's words, who we are, and even who Satan is. Yeah. Yeah. Job 1-7 says, The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on him. 1 Peter 5a says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a lion, looking for somebody to devour. The devil is always waiting to make a move. That's why our defenses need to be strong and ready. You see, defense is the action of defending or resisting attack to, to stop the challenger, the offense. And in football and basketball, most of the times, you have to prepare for your upcom upcoming team. Now, nowadays, we have a lot of teams that will record and we can go online and, and watch them. We, you know, maybe have a week to prepare, you know, for these teams and what they're going to play in and how, how we're going to defend that. Proverbs 2.11 says, discretion will protect you. And understanding will guard you. You need to understand that the devil will attack you, and he knows where your weak points are. Yeah. The door, and what doors are barricaded, and what doors are stronger than others. So, knowing and studying the word is your defense and your offense. Yeah. We may not know, or we may not have actual film of, of Satan or how he's going to attack us, but we know where he will attack. Yeah. He's going to find those doors in your mind that have not been barricaded. Yeah. It's like your house, okay? So whenever you go to bed at night, most of the time, you know, you lock the doors to your house and make sure all the windows are closed because obviously you don't want an intruder to come in to steal, kill, and destroy anything. Think of your mind as the house. Yeah. And the devil's an intruder trying to find the doors that you have left unlocked and forgot about. Yeah. Maybe you're asking, how do I know if there are any doors that are unlocked? James 4, 7 says, submit yourselves to God and then resist the devil and he will <laughs> flee from you. When the enemy is destroying you in an area of your life, many times you are struggling in that area because that area has not been submitted to God yet. So submit these issues to God. Submit your lust to God. Maybe you're not watching pornography, but you can't miss an episode of Game of Thrones. And you may say, you know what? I don't like it for the sex and stuff. I like it for the other content. But when a show features orgies, gay sex, and premarital sex, and incest, do not be surprised why you're struggling with lust in your life. Submit it to God. Yeah. Submit your fear to God. You may wonder, uh, why are we so afraid of the dark as humans? Or why are we afraid of going out by ourselves? But you're still going out and you're watching rated R movies that are really scary and give you nightmares. <laughs> so submit your social media to God. When you wonder why you are dealing with so much drama in your life, but yet you're pumping anger and gossip and slander into your life over social media, there's your answer. Submit it to God. Submit your finances to God. Don't wonder why your finances are failing when you do not pay your tithes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Listen, church, if something has not been submitted to God, yeah. that is a door that the devil can come through and, and take back all those things that have been healed in the past. He will attack you physically and spiritually. So my question is to you, are the doors in your life, are, are they unlocked? Is there things that you need to submit to God? Thank you. Yeah.